Hey, it's Tommy Hodgins. You may know me from my experiments with element queries. Today, I'm going to show you a helpful hint for debugging EQCSS. Now, if you're not familiar with EQCSS, it's an element query plugin that extends CSS to do a lot of cool things. You can set responsive breakpoints on elements rather than the viewport. It has scope styling, a parent selector, all kinds of goodies. Let's have a look at some of the features here below. So you could set a breakpoint based on the width of an element, and you can see here that it's using a custom syntax. This is not CSS, but at element, the selector, and then we have one condition on it here, uh, min width 500 px, and then there's a style sheet inside which applies to the element only when that particular condition is true. So we have min width, we have uh, min height. Another thing it can do is based on the number of characters, Another feature is the number of children that a element contains. And there's all kinds of stuff based on the scroll position, the object's own aspect ratio. So there's a few different ways that this custom EQCSS syntax can be added to a website. In HTML, it can be contained in a regular style tag it could also be included in a script tag as long as the script has a custom text slash EQCSS type. You could also load custom EQCSS syntax from a string in JavaScript using EQCSS.process or EQCSS.parse in conjunction with EQCSS.register, which would read the custom syntax, and then it would take the parsed query and actually load that into the plugin. And you can also write your custom EQCSS syntax in a regular CSS style sheet or in a file that looks like a CSS style sheet and link that into your HTML with a link tag. Or you can also include that in HTML with a script tag with that custom text EQCSS type and then using the source attribute load an EQCSS file. So with all of these different ways that a query can be loaded, how do you debug a site that's using EQCSS queries? So I'm going to show you how to do that. If you open the JavaScript console here, if you believe that EQCSS might be running on the website, you can type EQCSS, and if the plugin is loaded, you'll get back an object that includes all of the functions, as well as an array called data that includes all of the parsed queries. Now each one of these queries corresponds with one of our custom syntax queries, in our styles. You'll notice that the first one here is min width pixels. And if we look inside this object, we have a selector for min width pixels, which was in our custom syntax here. We also have the inner style sheet in a string, which includes everything that the element query is wrapping. And if we include conditions, we have an array which contains one object for each condition that's present. Here we have just one condition for min width with a value of 500 and a unit of px. And so that gets reflected here in an object inside this conditions array that says measure min width unit px value 500. So you can see that all of the data is here, but this isn't the easiest way to read this. If you look in the DOM of any page where EQCSS is loaded, you'll notice that there are these extra attributes that are being added by the plugin. If any rule by the plugin applies, you'll notice that in our dev tools in the sidebar, we can see that the CSS rule is applying and we can see that the selector tells us this is the zeroth query. So this is the very first one when we make that small, it no longer applies. So if we wanted to know where this is coming from, we can look inside the zeroth query in eqcss.data, and this is the object that corresponds with the query that we're seeing applied. So I'm gonna show you another way that you can quickly assess all of the queries that are loaded in eqcss.data and that is to stringify them 
So this is the opposite of parsing. Instead of taking the custom syntax and parsing it into an object, we're taking an object and putting it back into a string that's easy for us to read. Now the code for this will be in the description below the video, so you can just copy and paste this in. Now even though the queries on this site are spread throughout the site, when I paste this in, we're going to end up with one string with a style sheet that represents each of the loaded queries. So how we're able to use this for debugging is if we get to a website where we believe EQCSS may be loaded, but we're not sure, and we think that there might be queries that are applying to elements on our page, but we want to see what those are, quickly, at a glance, we can hop into the console, type EQCSS to verify if the plugin is loaded. If it is loaded, and it looks like there's 23 queries loaded in, we can stringify all of those back into a style sheet, which makes it a little easier for us to assess what queries might be present on the page and which elements they might be applying to. It even gives us, at a glance, an idea of the conditions, if this is the pricing chart here, where we can test these queries and look for these styles applying in our sidebar. So I hope that helps show you how you can debug EQCSS if it's running in the browser. If today's video has met the conditions of your queries, please give the like button a smash and subscribe for more videos about EQCSS, element queries, and pushing the limits of responsive design.